Good morning, everyone. It's an early morning here on a Saturday, headed to Z-Max Dragway. We're finally all settled in outside Charlotte, and uh, it's my first autocross up here at Z-Max. Uh, kind of excited. In terms of changes in the car, not really that much. We've been busy moving and unpacking and stuff, but uh, the car itself, the only major change, still has the stock alignment, uh, but I'm running a new track set up, scrubbing in the tires for the National Tour next month. Uh, it's a Belgian VF5 in gloss bronze, 19 by 11 square with a plus 52 offset, meaning I need to run spacers up front, so totally fine, normal in the rear. Up front, I have a one inch Stita spacer um, to kick those wheels out and effectively make that 52 millimeter offset, roughly a 27 millimeter offset. Um, this allows me to rotate the tires all the way around, get the most life out of these expensive track tires. Uh, speaking of tires, I went with the Yokohama Advan AO52s. I tried to get my hands on the new 305 30 19 fitment of the Bridgestone RE71 RSs, but uh, they're really hard to come by, and Bridgestone's been pretty slow at rolling them out this spring, uh, despite racing season starting here in March. Um, so we're running the AO52s, and they're tried and true. I've had a, plenty of experience in these tires, and I'm excited to uh, see how they do just scrubbing them in. Um, the, only, the only thing I'm slightly concerned about is that they are a 295-35, meaning they're a little bit taller than the factory tires on this uh, Dark Horse. Um, if you guys remember, it's a 305-30 up front, 315-30 in the back uh, with the factory handling pack tires. And with the taller tire may come the potential for a little bit of rubbing, uh, especially when you're leaning into it at a stock al or street alignment. Um, so we'll see. I'm not 100% sure. Hopefully I don't rub anything too bad or if it'll self-clearance, we'll see. Uh, but anyways, scrubbing those tires in, getting ready for the national tour event here at Z-Max next month. Really excited for that. Some more parts going in the car in preparation for that event as well. So stay tuned. We'll see how things go today. All right, just wrapped up autocross at Z-Max Dragway with the CCR region here in Charlotte. Uh, it's my first time racing in Charlotte and uh, first time on AO52s with the Dark Horse. Um, a lot of firsts today, uh, a little rusty. Um, I got good sleep last night. I felt relatively prepared, but I think um, the AO52s kind of threw me for a loop today. I ended up mid-pack and cam. Uh, they combined cam S, cam T, and cam C all together in one class and ranked them by packs. Um, in terms of times, uh, to give you an idea, it's much more competitive here in Charlotte. With two, I think there was 200 cars racing today, so uh, it's 5 o'clock. I got here at like... I don't know, 7.30, 7.45, so it's been a long day. Uh, number one uh, in class uh, had a 61.3 raw time uh, with a 50.32 packs. Um, I ended up around mid-pack out of 15 cars. Uh, ninth place, uh, 64.284 raw time so a three second um three second spread between first and ninth place uh raw time which is which says a lot um with just how competitive it is here 
and then uh, 53099 packs. Um, I'm not sure where I landed in terms of the whole list of cars for today. I'll have to check that and add, add that in the comments or in the description. Um, but I, I, I don't know how to feel about today. Uh, the car was great. I felt like, um, you know, I was pretty good. Um, I think there's a learning curve with these AO 52s. Uh, I've never historically liked these tires a ton, but they are the fastest tire right now. Um, and I, I would love to uh, get my hands on a set of the, the new 305 fitment in 19 inch for the RE71 RSs. But for now, this is the 200 Treadwear tire to have. My own com only complaint about them, and it's a pretty big one, is I feel numb on them. Um, I mean, even in comparison to the Pirellis that came on this car in the factory, uh, raced on those back in December, and technically I could have raced on those in a regional race here today, but I wanted to scrub in the AO52s and prep for the national tour event here next month. Um, and with the AO52s, there was a little bit of a learning curve in terms of pressures. Uh, for those of you that are relatively new to autocross, uh, tire pressures mean the world. Um, so the, the, uh, you can tell by temperature of the tire across the tire in terms of what camber's doing. Uh, but if the tires get too hot and they get slick and slippery, then you're not going to be having a good time. Or uh, if you don't have enough pressure, uh, the car can feel spongy and not very reactive to, to what you're trying to do uh, getting around those corners. So um, I was playing around in the 31 to 34 uh, PSI hot range with the AO52s. Um, and John Nawanagu, who uh, got actually, got, I believe, got first or second in class in CAM today, normally uh, drives a Camaro. I believe he also has a C7 Corvette. He's a very quick driver, very talented. And uh, he popped over and said, hey, AO52s, he goes, run, run 37 pounds square. Thank me later. And uh, I pumped him up to 37 pounds, and the car felt a lot more confident it was uh more nimble um because effectively i mean if you're if you're pumping up pressure especially in a car with no camber up front you're effectively adding more spring or more more spring to the car um because you're stiffening those sidewalls it's going to have a little bit more oomph underneath it and uh that definitely gave me a little bit more confidence. The car held better. Um, it was a little bit more tail happy, so we'll have to play with uh, with the alignment, see how it reacts, and then potentially the pressures from there. But that was definitely a, an, an awesome help. The problem is I made that change on my very last run. And then once it felt so good, I was like, all right, sweet. And I was going and going and going and completely blew one of the turnarounds. Um, so uh, that, effectively screwed up my time uh, towards the end. So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes from there. But in all honesty, uh, it was a good race. It was a good time. I got some great seat time in this car. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve in this in this particular location. Z-Max is a huge, huge venue. It's high speed. Um, and I was told today that uh, was a medium pace <laughs> for for what Z Max typically is, especially at the the quicker um, the quicker national events that they have here. Um, so that kind of says a lot <laughs> for what what it could be, because um, I I topped out at top of second. I hit uh, twice, I want to say, and top of seconds around 70 miles an hour. So we we were boogieing, um, but. Uh, yeah, my biggest takeaway is I'm very excited to get suspension installed on this thing. Um, I have a couple Steeda parts that are ready to go on. Um, so stay tuned to see how that goes. Um, I have a couple performance modifications. I plan to get a couple more horsepower out of this thing. Um, so all of that is in prep for next month, the national tour that's coming here to Z-Max. Um, so we'll see how all that pans out. Um, I think I just need to get a little bit more camber in the car, a lot more camber I should say. Right now I'm on totally factory alignment with these AO52s and uh, there was definitely a, a point of which they just said, I'm giving up <laughs> and then they started pushing big time. But uh, anyways, um, it was a good event. I feel, I feel 
confident going forward that uh, you know with the right changes to the car, making it a more competitive Cam C car, and uh, essentially um, getting a better feel for this car, how it handles more camber, how it's going to uh, react um, to the modifications and frankly just get more seat time with it. Um, I think the low end torque is going to be very rewarding, especially in those those tight corners. That's something that the 350 didn't have. Uh, but I can tell you right now today, um, I, I did miss the 350 a little bit and mostly the camber. <laughs> uh, the camber that I had up front definitely would have helped in, in, in a lot of those corners. And uh, frankly, just the high speed nature of this course. Um, not that the Gen 4 Coyote doesn't sing pretty well up top, but uh, it would have been nice to have that car today because um, I, I feel a lot more home at home in it. Um, but I can tell you right now, I will get that way quickly um, in the Dark Horse. And uh, I know that the body control, the Magnarite calibration on this thing from the factory, the, the brakes, those two things alone will uh, reap massive benefits uh, once I can get a handle on the, the madman behind the driver's seat, behind the steering wheel. Um, and we'll just uh, kind of take it from there. So if you want to find out what's going on with this car, the autocrosses, the parts going on, all that good stuff, um, uh, please subscribe. You know, I, I would love to, love to have you on board. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Are you a fan of the bronze look of the, the VF5s on here? It's definitely something new I'm trying. I've never really done anything bronze in the past with my cars. Um, I plasti dipped my, my wheels on my 2011 GT about a decade ago. That's the closest I've ever gotten to bronze. I did the bronze on those. But uh, anyways, I think it's a good look. Um, so let me know your thoughts. Comment below. Hit that like, subscribe, and uh, that notification bell. We'll see you next time.